day 365 of the vlog and it makes it for one year of <laughs> doing this over and over fighting off sleep fighting off those I don't want to let's skip one day I had a bad day uh, went, almost went to bed early uh, go to bed too late <laughs> All those kind of things that come up. But I made it for one year. The day rating's a seven. Funny start. Got up, walked the dog. Was out to work. And I haven't been taking my phone out since her little aggressive incident. So I can kind of focus more on her and she can listen to me a little bit better. And I had the alarm set and I put it down in the book. And then I got about two miles away and I was thinking, where's my phone? And <laughs> I needed it because right now we have a login access that you sign in with your email and password and then it sends you a temporary code to your phone. You need to log in. Oh, so I had to come back and get it. <laughs> but besides that, it was really smooth. No. A little bit quiet at work, which was kind of nice. Then got out of work. I decided to get ready for the trail. I had a little time with the pup, so we played and cuddled up a little bit. She wanted to play catch and keep away. We finally got her out for a 15-20 minute walk. We saw one dog. We saw one dog twice. It was just kind of hovering around one little courtyard area. It's going around and sort of going around and sort of going. I think it was a new dog. That one didn't seem to... We were just trying to give it patience, I guess. And I saw it later outside the complex. So I don't know. But got Gamora to calm down. In the park and get crazy. She saw the other dog, <clears throat> excuse me, she saw the other dog, got her to sit down, stay calm, walk away without having any issues. So it was a good walk. Came in, gave her a little treat, changed real quick, got out the door to the group run. I didn't get there early enough to do my own, I guess, warm up, if you want to say. But got there in time to a light stretch, little movement, <clears throat> excuse me, and then did the group run, but my buddy Jason wasn't there, and the other three or four people that I normally socialize with hang out, so I had to make new friends, <laughs> and thankfully our, our group leader guy, Michael, was back, so he recognized me, he's like, hey man, how have you been, what's new, and so we chatted for Maybe half mile. Got up a little bit, so that was nice for him to be there. And then met two new people, and they were both more of that ultra side. And one of them, we had a joke, not a joke, but well, one of them, it was in the group run, and it just got dark. So it was at the point where everyone had the lights out the last mile and a half. And they were a little bit behind me. And they said, "Hey, your shirt's kind of reflective." I didn't, I didn't realize it. I'm like, "Oh, is it?" I'm like, I didn't know. I thought I was just a little triathlon shirt. And so I said, "Yeah, it's kind of reflective. You can kind of see. It's kind of cool." I said, "Oh, thanks. I didn't know." So maybe now I'll use it more for like a night running shirt. A night running shirt. That way, people can be sure to see me. It's cars and stuff. So. Yeah, I don't want to get into the car accident. <laughs> so, that was a nice little little moment to joke around with. And I said, oh, it wasn't too like bright or reflecting. I didn't know. Like, no, no, it's good. It's kind of cool. All right, cool. And then we, maybe a quarter mile later, we finished the run. And we were sitting there talking with the other person. I was like, hey, you know, what are you training for? You've got like a little 
kind of balancing your step. I think just coming from a coaching perspective, you can kind of see when someone's dragging their feet, their hips are low or high, and how they're carrying themselves. That maybe they're either new or they're trained or well-conditioned or they're in season. That kind of a thing, if that makes sense, you just... You can kind of spot out a little bit of the runners that are there just running once or twice a week to other runners who are running consistently like day after day, mile after mile, doing some big races. <clears throat> and they say, yeah, you know what? I kind of just started this group about a year ago and I'm going to do my first ultra. Was it this weekend or next weekend? And they go, oh, wow, that's great. Good for you. And like, what about you? What are you racing? And I'm like, hmm. I'm more of a miler, 5k guy, but I'm doing a 15k race with the group this weekend, so we'll see how it goes. And it's called Mountain to Fountain. Like, oh my gosh, I love it. That was one of my favorite races. I'm like, really? How was it? And they said, oh, it's it's super scenic. It's nice. It's, you're going to enjoy it. It's right by the fountain. Da, 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 da. Cool, cool, cool. And they said, all right, well, we'll see you next time. Cool. All right, see you later. Thanks for chatting. And I took off, got another mile in, two miles. So a mile out, mile back. So I got in a little bit over six, it was like 6.13, but I don't know if I can pull this up real quick. It shows, let's see. No. It shows. 6.12 miles, but it shows that on the top, there's no miles for the week. And I noticed that when I came back, I was like, okay, that's weird. It was synced up as a, a cycling. So I had to edit it and make it a run, but it's still not showing up on my watch. I was like, maybe I'll turn it off, turn it back on, and my watch has something, or the power button doesn't want to turn off. I think I dropped my watch one too many times right on that spot, and so now that 12 o'clock position on the watch just doesn't recognize any kind of, any kind of touching on the screen, so. Yeah, I don't know. It's um, kind of weird, kind of upset that I'm going to want those miles later. <laughs> but I know I did it. I know I ran six. Mm. Let me see. Let me see, let me see. So it has the trail. And as the pace, it was so 9.40. Oh, that's good. It's got the glare. Why is there so much glare right now? So we did the first bit, and then it rolled over. So I don't know. And even before, I was trying to jog up, and I got in... It was like 0.15 to get up to the group, and then I was getting ready to start, and I looked at it again, and it started over. I don't understand. I don't know where that mileage went. I mean, it was super short, but I don't know if my phone was just, my, my watch was glitching out today, but <laughs> another weird thing. But I made sure to get in six miles. We ran four with the group. And then there's about a mile marker that I, I know is out there. So I went there and back. And I was going to be a little bit shy. <clears throat> so I ran past my car down a little bit and back. So the miles are done. The legs are a little bit tired. The quad was a little bit sore today. So a nice easy pace was good. But I could tell on the downhills trying to break a little bit. Or if I slid and tried to stop. It, it would tighten up a little bit. The same with up. Extra pushing on the up, where it was more than, than a 
that jaw tightened up. But watch this interesting video of this guy from the 1940s who was Swedish. Is that right? Let's say Swedish. I'll have to look up the name again. I, I haven't heard of him before. Uh, it had his running journal. And he was only running, <clears throat> I think it was quoted as 50 kilometers a week, which I think turned out to be about 37.4, 37.6 miles a week. And he was running a 346 mile, 401, or sorry, 346. 346, 345, 1500, 401 mile, and it was a sub 15, 5k. What? And the guy that was brought it up in the video was saying, yeah, this is what he's doing. He does like a 15 minute, almost that all out effort up in the mountains. And then that's it. And then he comes back later in the day and he runs almost like another 5k at an easy run pace or no it was different like the whole training thing was different it was a lot more high end pace and very little easy run pace and of course someone who tried to get out there and do that without any running background probably gonna pull a hamstring or <laughs> Achilles or calf muscle because it's a lot of pressure to consistently continually put on your body that just made me think, kind of like sprinters, that how do they get fast? And every day they run top end speed. Every day they run sprint, 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 sprint. So it's contemplating how do I add this into my training? Like, what if I do keep the workout Wednesday and then maybe Monday, Friday, add some kind of small thing in there? More than a stride, but I don't know making me think <laughs> try something different get the body to adapt to something new give it a try for about a year and see if there's any improvement so I'll look more into that and I'm sure I'll post it down here if it goes good or bad I mean I'll probably wait till after this race and then try to implement more of that short burst speed work to get more like knowledge of it too i believe there's a book out so i might go get the book and go from there like i'm just giving a small piece of what they were going over but really interesting that they could run that in the 40s and be that competitive and they said at the time they had 14 world records so something was working for them. anyways just interesting thought. Interesting thought. Again, that's the day. That's 365 in a row. They're done. Maybe I'll do a part B about why I started it. But as of right now, it's 12.38. I'm ready for bed. I think I got to bed at 3 officially yesterday. So I made work drag on a little bit. And I'm trying to get, catch up with a little bit of rest for this week for the race. Just overall sleep, <laughs> get better sleeping habits. So, can I call it a night? So, run your life with health and happiness, and have a good night.